Hello, my name is Gordon Muir. I'm a urologist working at King's College Hospital in London and also at London Bridge Hospital. And I've been carrying out laser and various other operations of the prostate for over 20 years now. Uh, I've had a significant interest in trying to reduce the side effects of treatment, which I'm afraid we're not always very good at. And that's developed very much into offering patients choice. And one of the slides I tend to use for my trainees is this one here. So I can show them a picture of a prostate on the left of the screen. You can see an ultrasound of a prostate in the middle. There's a picture of the cavity in the middle of a prostate after an operation. And on the right is the same picture seen with the ultrasound at the end of the operation. And essentially, it doesn't matter what we do. If we make a hole in the prostate, a man will pee very well. And he will usually have an excellent improvement in the symptoms, but there may be side effects associated with it. And I also am often asked, which is the best operation? Well, now and again, you can find a man where we clearly should do one thing rather than another, but they tend to be rather extreme. And if we consider cars, and here are four cars, and I'm not a petrol head, but I've got lots of friends who are, uh, you can look at the beautiful Ferrari, the wonderfully technological Lexus, the very rugged Land Rover, or the very cheap and simple 2CV. And these can all be perfect for the individual who wants to drive them, but it's not possible to compare them. So I think we need to think like that in terms of prostate surgery, rather than telling men what they should have, we should listen to men. So one of the things I'm gonna talk about, uh, which I'm pleased to offer is the ITIN device. And this little, this is a little picture of the eye tin that looks a little bit like the cage around a champagne cork. Uh, it comes in a small wrapping and we insert this into the prostate. Uh, I usually do it under local anesthetic, most people under general anesthetic, it's a patient choice. Uh, and what we do is we pop this little thing into the prostate and it sits there. And if we go on to the next slide, which shows us how it sits inside the prostate and it expands its three little legs and that causes small cuts into the prostate over a period of about five to seven days. I'll show you a video in a minute of how that works, but essentially this sits inside the prostate, we leave it there, take it out after a week under local anesthetic, and most men find this replicates the sort of benefit they get from a bladder neck incision or a TURP for a small prostate. So this is an animation of how the ITIN device is put in. Um, this shows a rigid cystoscope, which was done under general anesthetic, although, as I said, I usually use the flexible cystoscope. And it shows the penis and the prostate and the bladder. So with the man lying on his back, usually very comfortably, we straighten the penis and put a telescope in. So this is a bit less uh, traumatic if we use the flexible scope. And the scope's put into the bladder, and we have a little look around the bladder, and this is not obviously a real patient, this is a cartoon. We go through the sphincter muscle, this is for protects continence, go through the prostate, and you can see the prostate secluding there, and then we open up the ITIN device inside the bladder. So we open up the little spring inside the bladder, and then we have to make sure we put it in the right direction and pull it back so it sits inside the prostate. So here you see it inside the bladder. It's important the bladder is full here. And what's happening now is the scope's been taken out, been popped back in again, so we can watch the ITIN device being put into the prostate. And now we pull it backwards and it just snugs itself into place and holds position. Doesn't matter what size the prostate is, although my preference isn't to put these into very big prostates. Now there's a little string on it. We cut that little string, take out the insertion device, and then slightly weirdly, the man has a little string hanging out of his penis for five to seven days. We usually wrap this up with a little bit of tape so it doesn't get in the way. Most men have discomfort, uh, a bit of a urinary urgency while it sits there. And as it sits there, it causes three little cuts in the bladder neck. It looks a little bit like a Mercedes Benz symbol if you look in there. Then we take it out under local anesthesia. And for those men who have had a lot of discomfort, they find that goes away pretty well immediately we take the device out. We squirt some local anesthetic down the penis at this point, put in a little flexible catheter, and we just shove that in and the whole device comes out very easily. Most men with the item get in a 
pretty immediate benefit. But for some men, like our procedure, it can take a couple of weeks before the blockage goes away. And for a lot of men, as with all the procedures, it can take one or two months before the bladder calms down afterwards.